as the next video of the Compact Pro Lion 3000. I promised you a squeezy video, but I think I'm gonna put one video in between about memory. And my last videos were pretty long, so this will be a bit shorter because the squeezy video will be really long. Hi, my name is Victor Bart, and welcome to Retro Machines. And let's show you why this squeezy video will become probably way too long. I bought way too many squeezy rate controllers because of Timmy. I went to someone's home and I was shopping for squeezy cards and I pulled out a few cards. And then I sent Timmy from Sweden a uh, picture of the compact rate controllers and I asked him, are you also interested in some compact rate controllers? He also loves compact servers. And his answer was not like, oh yeah, I want this and that. No, he said, buy it all. So I bought it all. <laughs> I already bought this uh, Smart Array 3200. And then I bought all those cards that are not in the bag for 5 euro each. So what do we have? We have a 2DH, another 2DH compact rate controller. Then we have a 3200 dual channel, another smart array 3200 single channel, another 3200 single channel. Then we have an, a 4200 and it's a quad channel card. And all with memory and batteries and non-leaking. We have four <laughs> dual channel uh, 5300s all with 32 megabytes so this is the basic version and then I have one 5300 with 64 megabytes of memory yeah I bought uh, like 11 read controllers by that person plus the one in the back so I have now 13 RAID controllers for the compact. I will make a video where I talk about all the cards and try all the options out and see what the limitations are. But that will be a way too long video. So I will do first a memory video today. So the goal of this video is pretty simple. We're gonna upgrade the memory in the compact ProLion 3000 and we will see how much it can take. It supports 4 GB of memory with 8 512 megabyte sticks, so we're gonna try that out. I also have a 1 GB SD RAM stick, so I want to know if it's also supported. Because sometimes things work that are not on the official list because they were not invented yet back in the days. So uh, let's uh, see what kind of memory I have. Here we have a 1 GB Kingston SD RAM stick. A set of two uh, sticks of 512 megabyte. Here we have four compact memory modules, brand new, also 512 megabyte each. This is also a set of 512 megabyte each. These four modules are 256 megabyte each. And here we have six modules, also 512 megabyte each. But these are the modules from the Quantum 3D Alchemite systems. I don't want to use them in this compact. Keep them for the Quantum 3D systems. But I just took it out to see if I need it, I can try it out. But what I'm gonna try out is first the one uh, gigabyte stick, just to see if it works. Then I will uh, test out the 512 megabyte sticks and this set then i will take this out if that is working then i will put in the brand new memory test that out so if this set and these two sets will work in the machine i will just put these eight sticks in it and try out if it runs four gigabyte of memory without any issues and my quantum 3d system is now running at three gigabyte because on four gigabyte windows 2000 was stripping so maybe this one has a better memory controller, maybe not, we will see in this video. And we have an ultimate boot CD to test out the memory. The current memory is 512 megabyte each and they are double stacked PC100. And I have a similar set like this, also two 512 megabyte sticks. So that will make like a super nice set of 2 gigabyte for my dual slot 2 Xeon build. So I don't gonna put this double stack memory back in the system. I will keep this for my uh, dual slot 2. I think that will make a super epic set with 
four double stack memory modules. I took the top off and the mid bar out so I have easy access to the memory banks. Let's directly try out the one gigabyte stick and see if this is supported. It doesn't give a display and the front display of the server is also not showing any checks. So I don't think one gigabyte sticks are supported. Maybe I can see in the event log but probably there's no info in it. The last error message was from the RAID controller that the disks were not found. Oh, memory! On the front display it says one gigabyte memory. Hmm, why is it not showing up? Let's turn it off. Wait for a moment and then turn it back on. Okay, I don't think one gigabyte sticks will work in this system. They were detected, but the system was not turning on. Maybe this stick is uh, broken. I'm not sure. Let's try with the 512 megabyte PC133 sticks and see what it does. And we have one gigabyte memory detected and no memory errors. So what I'm gonna do to speed up the video is just add the second set of memory that I want to have now in the system and then if that works with 2 gigabyte I will run the ultimate boot CD and the memory check and see what it will give as a result 2 gigabyte of memory detected Windows 2000 detected the 2 gigabyte of memory the ultimate boot CD is booting let's go to memory memtest 86 so 2 gigabytes of memory detected 324 megabytes a second and let's run this for a little while just to see if there are any errors showing up because if there are errors they will show up if the memory sticks are like really broken I think this memory set will be okay for now so it's now time to uh, open the brand new memory. So break the seal. Pull them out. Smell them, they are really brand new. They smell brand new. Awesome. 512 megabyte synchronized 133 cas 3 ECC. They have like the same design as the Pacer sticks. Oh, and with Samsung memory and this has Infineon but also chips here and here so I think in terms of design they probably all work together they are not like a really strange variation of the memory let's take out the current set of memory and in between the CPUs it looks like there are two serverworks chipsets and maybe this has two pads to the memory instead of with a 440BX and GX just one memory pad to the memory. So maybe the CPUs don't share the same memory bus but have all their own memory. But I'm not sure I still need to figure that out because the bottleneck on many Intel chipsets is just one memory lane for two CPUs. And the first dual AMDs had the Alpha system bus with all uh, separate memory channels per CPU. So they were ahead of Intel back in the days uh, with that technology. But maybe this system already had that in the Serverworks chipset. That would be really awesome. And a little bit more performance. All the brand new memory is installed. 2 gigabytes of memory detected. Also 320 megabytes a second. Also this looks fine so far. So let's install 4 gigabytes of memory and see if the mem test will work and if Windows 2000 will work and doesn't crash or something or explode.
because of the splitted memory banks I couldn't swap the memory on top here to uh, this slot so this is all the same memory and the top one has like a different memory instead of all mixed up that is probably a little bit better but I think they are all just good spec memory that won't give any troubles I hope <laughs> let's see famous last words all the memory is installed and now comes the big question do I need 4 gigabytes of memory in a dual Pentium 3 500 and the answer is absolutely not but it is just awesome to have it so let's try it out 4 gigabytes of memory detected <laughs> awesome it's maxed out I hope there are no errors so let's first run a simple mem test and then see what Windows 2000 uh, thinks about all the memory. Oh, 3.67 initialized. There's something not as it should be. And the RAID controller is not showing up here, but the LEDs are flashing. Maybe it has the same problem as my Quantum 3D system with uh, 4 GB of memory that the IRQs all goes uh, doing strange things. Still on a memory in it on the front uh, panel. Events. Uh, no memory events. Let's take out one stick and see what that does. Maybe there's like a limit in the hardware that uh, 4 GB only works with a special kind of chips. 3.5 GB detected now and that was the same limitation as before so maybe there's a 3.5 GB limitation or one stick is uh, not correctly working. Ah, now the CPUs are detected and probably the RAID controller so this is working. So let's take out the other small module and replace it with the memory from the Quantum 3D system. They are also like the big uh, memory banks because maybe these uh, modules are a little bit m too modern for this system. 4 gig memory detected. Let's see how much it will in a let's see how much it will in a till uh, size. Why is it that works so difficult? Hey, this is working. So the small memory sticks are not really compatible with this system. And also on the front display, the memory in it is now done. Oh, this is strange. The memory is now 3.680, so it's not all detected. Maybe 4 GB memory is just not the best ID in the world. Let's see how much it will detect. Oh, 3.7. So it's not detecting all the memory, but still working. Windows 2000 is booted and let's see, it detects 3.7 GB of memory. So there's like 256 MB missing. Also here, 3.7. I think I gonna downgrade the memory from 4 GB. Also take the Quantum 3D sticks out and I will put in uh, less memory. So we're gonna take out the two top sticks, the Apacers. Let's see, we have Samsung memory here, Samsung, Samsung, Samsung and Samsung. Because the 256 uh, megabyte sticks, we have two Hynix and two also Samsungs. So let's put completely Samsung memory in it. Instead of 4 gigabyte, we will call 3.5 gigabyte with the 256 sticks on the top. And they are also the high memory sticks, so it looks epic with all the memory banks full. So uh, yeah, let's try 3.5 gigabyte uh, and see if that works. And then we also don't have the limitations 
of the chipset anymore, probably. Okay, 3.5 gigabyte memory detected. And let's see how much in it will uh, see in the system. Also 3.67. So all the memory is detected. Let's see, 3.5 gigabyte memory detected. Also here. So yeah, 3.5 gigabyte memory is probably the maximum that you can use without any strange things. So here you have it, a dual Pentium 3 500 megahertz with 3.5 gigabyte of memory, a total overkill, and we couldn't get the 4 gigabyte completely detected with the modules that I have, but 3.5 gigabyte is more than enough memory for what I'm gonna do with it. And this will be probably the memory configuration for this system for a very long time. So I still need to run the MemTest86 uh, for a longer time to see if everything is fine. But Windows 2000 boots fine, no blue screens, no errors. Also on the front display no errors. So uh, yeah, I think 3.5 gigabyte is uh, really successful. What I also need to figure out is how the server works chipsets work because there are two of them with four memory banks on each side and two CPUs so I need to find out what the memory pads are but there's not much documentation about server works chipsets and the structures. Also I want to know how they managed to get eight PCI slots on the motherboard with also a ninth PCI slot for the video card and a PCI slot for the onboard SCSI card. So that makes like 10 PCI devices on this motherboard and then you also have the IDE and how did they do that? I want to know it. I probably need to read a lot of manuals and see if I can find any info about it and I'm not sure if I will ever make a video about how they did the memory configuration. Probably that's a bit too much. <laughs> Maybe if I ever do a live stream and I have the info I will tell it, but not sure. So after this video we're gonna play with all the squishy RAID controllers and make an insane setup in this machine. That would be really, really epic. So if you like to support me, you can support me monthly on Patreon or use my Amazon affiliated links. Thanks for watching.